Well, hello. Thanks for not scrolling past my devotional today. I'm Pastor Layton, and I'm one of the associate pastors here at Calvary Christian Church. I'm kind of the new old kid on the block, and I'll be celebrating one year on staff here December 1st. So not so new, but the newest pastor on staff. From what I hear after December 1st, I can't use the excuse that I'm new here when I make mistakes. I am the Celebrate Recovery pastor here, but that's not what I'm gonna talk about today. But while I have your attention, Celebrate Recovery happens every Monday night at 6.30, and all are welcome. You are welcome. Celebrate Recovery isn't just for people who are struggling with addictions. It's for anybody who is dealing with a hurt or a hang up, a problem or dealing with anger or anxiety, depression. Only one out of three people who go to Celebrate Recovery are dealing with an addiction. I also help people get baptized and help new believers here at Calvary grow in their faith. So today, I want to talk about evangelism and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. In the early 1900s, R.W. Greenman, known as the Railroad Evangelist, would travel on trains to and from Chicago so he could share the gospel to passengers and people who worked on the railroad. It wasn't uh, really comfortable travel back then. No croissants, no air conditioning, no lattes. This wasn't an easy way to travel, but clearly Greenman had a passion for sharing the gospel to people on trains. In the 1940s, Anna Locke, a saved ex-alcoholic, used to hit Skid Row in Chicago and minister people in the streets and bars who were battling with alcohol and drug addiction. She would share the gospel with them right on the streets. Some she would even take home with them until they got back on their feet. In the 1930s, C. Morris would pull a trailer behind a truck with a band on it to the docks of Victoria, British Columbia. He parked the trailer in front of bars which were full of drunken longshoremen. The band would belt out hymns while he sang with the drunken sailors as they came out of the bars. Wood would invite them to his church which was down the street next to a fish and chip restaurant on the docks. So let me ask you, what are you doing to share the gospel? What are you doing to find the lost? What are you doing to share Jesus' free gift of eternal life? Jesus tells us in Matthew 28, 18 through 19, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is, of course, known as the Great Commission. In Acts 1, 8, Jesus tells us, but you will receive power from the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, and to the ends of the earth. So I'm not suggesting you load up your Prius with a worship team and drive to the tip of South America to witness the drug lords. I'm not suggesting you take home an alcoholic tonight. I'm not suggesting you jump on an Amtrak train tonight and go to Chicago. I'm suggesting you invite somebody to church. I'm suggesting you invite somebody to a Christmas Eve or a New Year's Eve service here at Calvary. I'm suggesting you share the gospel with a stranger at the mall. I'm suggesting you take evangelism explosion here. I'm suggesting you be bold at Thanksgiving and offer a prayer of our dinner at a house of a non-believer. Do you see what I'm getting at? Although, if Jesus has called you to drive to the tip of South America to witness the drug lords, answer that call. But answer that call after a lot of prayer and answer that call after speaking to Pastor Ben. I would like to leave you with one more verse, Mark 16 through 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. My prayer is that you will share the gospel. You will share his good news and his free gift to the lost. So one day you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Blessings and be well.